Hey guys, how you going? My name is Patrick Sheridan and I play guitar for Fit for an Autopsy. And uh, we're here today to do a little discussion about what gear I'm using live on the uh, Coffin Dragger tour with Thy Art is Murder, Rings of Saturn, and Dark Sermon. So we're gonna start with my guitars. Uh, very recently, uh, the fine people at Ibanez sent me over one of these RG752 Nebula Burst. It is an ash body and top bound five piece maple neck uh, maple fingerboard uh, nickel frets uh, low pro edge trim which everybody loves and uh, I have equipped this guitar with uh, Fishman modern uh, fluence pickups which I'm a huge fan of they're really cool interesting technology um, they're not like your standard typical uh, everyday active set because they come with uh, the option of a lithium battery pack which you can plug in so there's no more changing batteries or dealing with any of that BS. Um, I have it set up with uh, 9 through 64 Ernie Ball strings and uh, that's my basic setup for this guy. So we do drop A and drop G and then this is my backup. Um, it's a 2010 RGA 427. Um, can't really get them in the States. They're uh, European and Japanese release only, but I really wanted one, so I just went ahead and bought it. Uh, also, Fishman Fluence Pickups, uh, Zero Point Trim. It's one of my favorite playing uh, guitars, but I've been beating it up a little bit, so I'm trying to play it less, so she's gone to be my backup. And then, we'll move to the guitars that we do in G. This is a Hardtail 752 Wenge Top Mahogany Body, uh, Bird's Eye Maple Fingerboard, you know, your prestige five-piece neck with the uh, Goto locking tuners. Uh, this one has 9 through 68 on it, and it is tuned lower in drop G. It's got the Gibraltar 2 bridge, um, push-pull Fishman Moderns with the uh, nickel finish, which is one of their newer finishes. And uh, that is my main G. And then for my backup in G, I have uh, 2627, which is the couple of years back, I believe, um, 2012 flagship model for the Prestige line. Also zero point trim. This one has uh, Seymour Duncan blackouts in it, and I haven't changed them out yet, but they are very good pickups. Uh, you know, five-piece neck, the whole nine, pretty standard, black finish, fully bound, also a very good player, and a gift from my wife, so I always try to keep it with me. So that is my guitar boat. Next, we're going to move on to my pedal board. I use the Polytune, which is uh, probably my favorite tuner for a bunch of reasons, but because you can tune and then play in a full chord, and upon looking at the screen, you can see which note or string is actually out of tune. It'll register which one you need to tune to get that perfect pitch for your chord. So if you play a G and whichever string is out of tune, you're going to see a red indicator in that number of the string. So that's really cool. Um, recently I switched over to this Maxon. Um, it's the OD808X and it is unbelievably hot. It's probably to date one of the best overdrives that I've used. It's um, it's super hot to the effect of being too much, but I actually kind of like that because it gives you that ground to be able to pull back if you need to pull back, and if you're you know in a room or on a stage where you feel like you're getting choked out a little bit, you know you got enough there to cut through and do what you need to do. And then uh, ISP Decimator Two, everybody knows what they are. You know, in my opinion, it's the best noise gate that you can put on the floor or in your, you know, effects loop. So, you know, industry standard kind of thing. And then the uh, Seymour Duncan Vapor Trail. Um, recently, I started using the uh, AD909 Pro, which is the max on delay, but I haven't really had enough time to get the exact tone I want out of it. That's going to get added to my board very soon. But um, I've been using the Vapor Trail for a little while, and it, it's a great, like, you know, single function delay. Um, does its job, no problems, and uh, I, I do like it a lot, but it'll be time for an upgrade soon. Using Slant Mesa 4x12 oversized cab, again, industry standard cab, it just does its job perfectly, and I've always stood by the Mesa stuff. But this, this guy is special. 
This is the um, the new JP Mark II C uh, Mesa Boogie Mark II amplifier that they've released recently, and um, I'm super jazzed on this. Uh, I've been using it since I got it. Uh, I was using the um, the dual rectifier multi watt, which I may go back to using again, but. I really, really love this JP2C. It's multifunctional. Every channel does its own thing. It's got uh, a shared EQ and then an independent EQ for whatever channels you want to do. So you can set this EQ up. It's a little flat because I haven't been using it. But um, you can set this up to be your channel 1 and channel 2 EQ. And then channel 3, you can see I have a very extreme tone coming out of there. Um, you have a shred mo uh, mode, which allows you to get more gain, sharper tone, more cut through. Um, and honestly, uh, this thing is, they did a great job. I'm very, very happy to be playing this, and I'm stoked that they finally put out that Mark IIc model that everybody's been asking for. So if you get a chance, for sure, go check this thing out. All right, hi guys, this is Shane Slade. play bass for Fit for an Autopsy. So we're going to do a gear rundown today. So this tour, well every tour, we run Ibanez, but this tour I picked up this Ibanez SR 5005, just got this baby, it's really nice, it's got a Bartolini in it, it's a lot smaller than the BTBs I've been using, so I'm still trying to figure out how to play this a little bit, it's smaller for me, but it's actually, this thing sounds amazing. So for strings, what I'm using on this is a, are the Cobalt 130s. I was trying out the Slinky 135s because I was playing this originally in our G tuning, but I like this a lot more in our A tuning. My main one that I use for all of our A stuff is the BGB 675. It's a lower model, it's a Bartolini pickups. I'm using the same Cobalt 130s on it. This bass, they're a lot bigger than the SRs, but they just take a beating. They really do. I've had these for three years now and they still sound just like I had them, played just like I had them the first day. But I love these, so the other one I use is the 1405, the premium. This one I use for all of our G. This one with the Bartolini setup that's in this one. Oh no, these ones have Nordstrom. The Nordstrom setup in this one really, really sounds good in the lower tuning. Our drop G stuff really comes through with these pickups. Alright, so for our heads, this tour I got a new head. I was using the Mesa Big Block 750, but I switched that out. We, were, we went to Mesa and I saw that they had these D800 subways. It's 800 watts. These things are small, they're very simple. They have a deep switch on them and a passive and active mute. The voicing acts like a boost. The mids are super straightforward on it. You almost can't go wrong. I, I, I originally wasn't a fan of the idea of a small head like this, but I tell everyone I can't find anything I don't like about this base head. So I paired that. I've always used the rack mount RBI Sanzam. Originally, I was trying to match this with another pedal, doing some things that like Gojira was kind of trying to do. So what I have for pedals with this is I'm using the Sanzam pair driver. It's not actually my pedal, it's Dark Sermon's pedal, so he's letting me use it. But uh, this pair driver is a very different Sanzam that I haven't actually messed with or like really even heard about before. But it's got a little bit more to it. It's got a blend of frequency, drive, level. It's got a, a little bit more to it. So then I also pair that with my Keeley compressor, four knob compressor. It, to me, Keeley is the best compressors I've ever used. I've heard some other companies coming out, but I've had that pedal for right about four years now and it's never messed up on me. Tour worn, sweat in it, everything in it. And then just a classic decimator to clean up the tone, clean up everything. That Sanzam pair driver is a very, very cool thing. But everyone should check out these Mesa D800 subways. They're amazing little things. I use it live. Eventually I want to run two of them. Do a little weird setup with them, but they're good. I like them, man. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Tim Howley from Fit for an Autopsy here to show you off some gear that we got. I uh, want to start off with guitars. Uh, this tour, the awesome dudes at Ibanez hooked us up. Uh, I got a brand new S5527 FX. Um, unlike Pat, I'm more partial to the fixed bridge models. 
Um, Seymour Duncan hooked me up with some sick pickups to put in this bad boy. Uh, I got a custom five in the bridge and a 59 bridge in the neck position. A little dime trick. This is, uh, it, it plays a lot different than most guitars that I usually play live. Just because it has the, the Prestige 7 neck profile. Um, has the volute. I'm not really into the volutes, but this thing fucking shreds. It's awesome. Uh, right now, uh, on pretty much everything that I play, even at home, I'm using the Ernie Ball Cobalts. Um, this one is a Ibanez 7421. It's their base model. I got the Mick Thompson Seymour Duncans in it. Uh, these blackouts are absolutely insane. Uh, I'm kind of partial to this guitar just because it was the first seven string that I played in Fit for an Autopsy. And uh, I always like to bring this thing out. A lot of kids online, it's kind of funny. A lot of kids online always see Pat's, you know, crazy guitar collection and, and as opposed to mine and they're like, oh, why do you like, you know, why does he play cheaper guitars, blah, blah, blah. I grew up playing cheap guitars, so for me, they feel awesome, but Ivan has even their lowest end model, the 7421, plays like a dream. You know, it's, it's quality wise, it's even though it's their most affordable model, it still plays like you know an eight nine hundred dollar guitar um this i'm also partial to this is one of the first guitars that ibanez actually gave to me uh it's a rgir 27 fe bk uh i made a custom leather pick guard myself uh just to switch it up a little bit same thing uh these are the mick thompson uh Blackouts, same thing, cobalt strings. So uh, here's my rig. Um, most of the people that I've known that I've toured with for years know that I haven't really changed up my rig too much. Uh, I've been using this same uh, two-channel Mesa dual rectifier since about 2009. And I'm beating it into the ground and it's not budging. You know, that's the cool thing about these heads is Mesa makes such a good product that you're beating it and beating it and beating it and it, it still holds up for years of touring. Um, right here, this is kind of like my secret weapon. It's a DB6 266 XL. I use it for a gate. I don't use the compression settings on it at all just because, you know, live to compress your tone. Personally, I'm not a fan of it. Um, but I use the output gain just to give it a little bit more bump to it. Uh, then from there, I'm going into a Boss NS2. I'm kind of double gating, an old trick that Dime used to do as well. And I'm using the Seymour Duncan 805 Overdrive, which is cool because it has its own EQ system built into the pedal, which I really like. It You can really dial your tone in. And that's just going straight into a plain old oversized Mesa 412 and uh, that's my rig. Alright guys, thanks for checking out all our gear. We're happy to show you what we use and what we do every day. Feel free to check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash fit for an autopsy official. We're on Instagram at fit for an autopsy. We're on Twitter at fit for an autopsy. And you can check us out on the road on the Coffin Dragger Tour with Thy Art is Murder, Rings of Saturn and Dark Sermon. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.